Hello there, welcome to chapter 11. We are almost done, and this is a chapter where we are going to dive into uh, pre algebra and basic algebra concepts, some uh, basic things you want to be able to take on to your next class here. So, um, hopefully, in front of you, you have the notes from class. If not, you can print them off on my website if you want them. And uh, hopefully, we can work through this fairly painlessly for you. So, I'm going to jump right into things here as you see the uh, things that we'll be going through as an introduction to algebra and solving equations and uh, just kind of the beginning layers of things that you'll need to know for solving equations and using variables um, to finding the values of variables given a certain types of equations. So here we go. Let's, let's kind of grind through some vocabulary here first, uh, some of which you've known, uh, you should know, if, as we've talked about the first one in class many times, a, a letter that represents a, a number is called a variable. It could be any letter. Uh, often in algebra they use the letter X, uh, but it doesn't have to be X. It could be Y. It could be A, B, C. It doesn't matter. It just means that that represents some value that is changing, could change, or we don't know what it is. A number by itself, that would just be a constant. So that's any number such as the number 9 or the number 10 or, or any number that's just a number without a variable. Uh, that's a constant number, uh, constant value. Number three, an algebraic expression that consists of uh, variables and constants together. So uh, here's an example of an algebraic expression. Could be uh, any kind of mix such as 3x minus 4. That's an algebraic expression because you've got the constants, or I'm sorry, constant like 4 and then a, a variable expression right there of 3x together is 1. So algebraic expression. Uh, number four, we can evaluate an expression by substituting the variable with a number, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a little bit here. And number five, you can solve an equation by finding the value of the variable. And so um, that is kind of the emphasis that we're going to begin looking at by the time we're done here. And you do it on much more complicated levels as you get on into your next class. Uh, next year hopefully for you. So let's uh, begin by looking at uh, how to substitute and simplify an expression like number one where we have uh, this expression. That, so this is an algebraic expression 3x plus 2y and they've said that x, could, x is 5 and y is 8. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute. Okay, We're going to substitute and this was from the previous page we're going to substitute these values into this expression. Okay, so x is going to be 5 and y is equal to 8 because they tell me that. So I'll uh, maybe squeeze that in right here for you. So for 3x plus 2y, I'm going to copy down 3 times. Now instead of putting 3 times x, I'm going to put 3 times 5 because that's the substitution. x is equal to 5. That's, that's the x. Okay, so it's 3 times 5. I know that it's multiplication because the variable 3 is touching the variable x. So if there's no symbol in between, we've talked about that, that means multiply. That means 3 times x plus, this means 2 times y. So I'm going to copy down plus 2 times the value of y was 8. And what I'm going to do now is follow the order of operations that we learned way back in chapter 1. And I'm going to multiply before I add, so I'm going to get this multiplication worked up right there, and I have 15 plus 16 is equal to 31. And there's the work for it over here that probably you should practice writing down, would be good for you to do. Number two says uh, 5y. Okay, so that means 5 times y, which was 8. And 5 times 8, that is equal to 40 right there. So that is, again, this is substituting and evaluating expressions here is what we're doing. Number three, you got to be careful with number three because it gets a little bit tricky if you're not careful with your signs. And that is often an error, a place of error here. So let's look at what's happening. We have negative two times y. So let's get that down. Negative two times eight, because y is eight, minus three times x is five, three times five. Okay, so let's watch our signs here. Here we have negative 2 times 8 is negative 16 minus, now we have 3 times 5 here is 15. 
Now, if you recall, when we talked about subtraction, I talked about how it's much smarter to change subtraction to addition. So if I have minus 15, I want to make that plus negative 15 right there, which is the same thing. You're at negative 16 and you take away 15 more, okay, and that works out to be negative 31 is what number three works out to be. And here's the work over here, how we got to the 31. Number four, that's one you, you need to be really careful with. If you're trying to put all this into your calculator, sometimes it will work. But in this particular one, you need to understand what's going on here. So let's, let's copy it down. 10 times y is 10 times 8 over 2 times x is 5, 2 times 5. So basically what's happening here is when it's written this way, I think we've talked about this, but it's been a while, you need to think kind of like there's parentheses around the top and the bottom. You have to simplify the entire numerator and you have to simplify the entire denominator before you can actually do that division right there. That symbol there means divide. That fraction means divide. Okay, but you have to finish the top and the bottom before you can do that. So this problem works out to be eight. If you just stick that in your calculator without the parentheses, you're gonna get a different answer. Another trick on the calculator is to type in the top and then hit the equal sign, and then it'll do that division and then you do divide and then put the bottom in parentheses as well. That's one way to do it. But that works out to be eight for us right there. Okay. So moving on to page three uh, in your notes, what we have is um, the distributive property of subtraction. I'm sorry, I said page three. I meant the bottom of page two. I turned it over a little too fast. The, uh, this is actually a really important rule that you're going to need to have uh, become familiar with, the distributive property. And it's you have to have this as we move on into some of the higher level algebra here. So I'll introduce the, the property here and then I'll probably have to stop the video and start a new one here shortly. Uh, the distributive property. Okay, the first thing that this is, this is about addition or subtraction. Okay, the distrib distributive property is always true. Let me give you the rule right here. You have A parenthesis B plus C. Think of this as three different numbers that are not equal because the letters are different. Okay, so A would be some number, maybe that's one. B would be another number, maybe that's two, and C would be a different number, three. Well, what we're trying to say here is that th this equal sign, remember equal means the same as, okay? So this value is the same as if I were to multiply this number, this A times this number out here, if I were to multiply that A times B, and then I were to take this A and multiply that, and then keep this sign here, plus A times C, that these are the same. This and this, it's the same value, and it's always true. It always works now. This may sound, you may be wondering, well, what is this about? And you'll see why we need this as we move further into algebra. All I want to do right now on this slide is prove to you that it's true. Okay, we're going to prove that, that this is true. If I have this value, it's always the same as this. So let's take a look at these two. You'll notice these two things down here are the same, these two expressions. So I'm going to work this one out the old-fashioned way. Okay. The old way, which is, which is fine to do when you can. All right, let's just work it out the way we've learned, and that's using the order of operations. Now, there's nothing wrong with this, and you, you should do it this way, the one on the left, when you can. In this particular question, we can add 5 plus 4, get 9. This 3 here means time, so that means 3 times 9 is 27, and that's the right answer, and that's what that equals, and again, you should do that when you can. Now, I'm going to show you the distributive property here, and we're going to see if we can work it out this way here and still get 27. According to this side here, if I take this number right here and multiply it times this number right here, see A, B, A times B, it's kind of like that's A, that's B, and that's C. So I'm going to take this 3 and I'm going to multiply it times that 5. Now I'll write it down here like this so hopefully you can understand what I'm trying to tell you here. 3 times 5 there. And I'm going to keep this sign here which is addition plus 
And then here, where it's a times c, okay, I'm going to take a, which is 3, times c, which is 4. All right, now, according to the order of operations, you multiply before you add. So if I do all the multiplication, I get uh, 15 plus 12, right? You can double check me. Now add 15 plus 12 and see what you get. It's 27, right? Which is the same thing we've got here. So what we're trying to show you here is that this is true. Either way you work that out, whether you do the addition in the parentheses, then multiply, or you distribute the three, you still get 27. That will always work, okay? And that's important to us. And we'll learn why as we get into the next video there. So thanks for watching. We'll be back soon for number two.